Hello, my name is Jonathan Holt. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do a charging port reflow on a Samsung Galaxy S2. Uh, this particular model that we're working on is the Sprint Epic 4G Touch. The materials that you're going to need are your reflow station. Uh, we're going to be using the heat gun just a little bit for this repair. Mostly we're going to be using the soldering iron. The temperature that we had our set for for the repair is about 200 degrees Celsius. You're also going to need uh, helping hands. These are actually optional. Um, we find it easier sometimes to do this particular repair just on the table, um, but if you don't want to risk uh, burning your table or anything, you can use the helping hands to hold the board of the phone. You're also going to need your solder paste and also um, copper braid. You'll only need that if you end up putting too much solder on your pins and having to fix it. Otherwise, you actually won't need the solder braid for this. The most common reason that we see this particular phone and uh, a lot of other Samsung phones stop charging is not because the charging port is bad, um, but actually because there's a broken connection uh, from the pins to the board. As you see on this picture right here, the pin that's all the way to the left has actually got a break um, from where the pin connects to the board where that solder has just worn out and disconnected. And that's why a lot of times you'll see a customer um, or a person or maybe with your own phone where you have it plugged into a charger and if you wiggle the charger it'll connect but if you don't it'll disconnect. That's because this pin when pressure is put on it will touch the board but otherwise it'll lift up. So this uh, particular method of reflowing is going to fix these kinds of issues. As you start this repair the first thing that we're doing right here is we are heating the board of the phone. You don't want to heat it up so much that you melt the solder and actually uh, take the port off. We're going to be leaving the port on in this repair and right now heating it allows that when you put the solder paste on there it'll actually melt a little bit and flow on there instead of having a big glob of solder paste because when you first put the solder paste out of the tube it's actually kind of thick. Heating up the board prevents it from globbing up. At this point you're going to apply some solder paste just a little amount to go across the different pins. You don't want to put too much on there because then you'll have to use the copper braid to take off the excess solder because it'll bridge the connections and right here is a pretty good amount of solder to be able to reflow the pins and just secure the connection that it has to the board. After you've applied all of your paste what you're going to do is take your soldering iron and you're just going to touch up all those points. This is going to melt the solder. It's not going to look very pretty at first but you're going to melt up all the solder and once you've got it on there as you see in a moment, we're going to take a flux pen. You can have uh, any kind of flux. We have ours in a flux pen, kind of looks like a highlighter. And you're going to apply some flux on the board. And then we're going to take our soldering iron and touch it up again. What this does is all that solder melts, but there's not enough flux in the paste when you're heating up with the soldering iron to make it really go on those pins the way we want to. So after we get the flux on there, we're going to go with the soldering iron and heat it up again. And the goal here, when the port is come out of the manufacturer, the way it is uh, attached to the board, there's some solder on the bottom, and then it heats up um, just through a machine, and the port lays right on top. So there's a little bit of solder on the bottom of those pins that connects it. The goal here is to resecure that connection, and what we're going to do by the end of it is the solder is going to, for the most part, completely encase those pins and travel up the length of the pin instead of just being at the bottom. So overall, what it's going to do is have a much, much more solid connection, and it's going to be a lot more durable to where if the charger, when it's plugged into the phone, moves a little bit, it should withstand that, and it's not going to just uh, break the connection because solder is a very... Um, soft metal. It's easy to break if there's just a little bit of it. So we're going to be putting on a lot more and that's going to fix that issue. After you've finished touching up the ports, you'll see there that there's a lot of flux still left on the board. You don't want to keep that there because that can corrode over time. So what we do is just take a brush with some denatured alcohol and we're cleaning that up. And once you've done that, assuming that you've got a good connection on all the pins, you can use a USB microscope or something similar to observe and make sure there's no more breaks. And after that you should be good. 
once you've finished with that, um, this is just kind of a before and after shot, you can definitely clearly see the break on that far left pin there. And then this is an after shot showing all those uh, ports have got a, a bigger amount of solder on there. It's not just on the bottom of those pins, it actually is uh, encompassing the whole pin and it goes all the way up to the top of the pin on most of those. So it just gives a, a much nicer, more secure connection that is going to withstand a little bit of movement by the charger and, and it should be charging uh, just fine after this. So that's uh, all for this video. I hope this helps and good luck.